Once again, good morning. Good morning. Tell the person sitting next to you, I'm glad you wake up early today. Okay. So, ang sarap po ng uh, bed weather. Okay. Kung nagising po kayo ng medyo maaga-aga, especially early morning. Okay. Madaling araw. Napakalakas po ng ulan. Hindi ko lang po alam sa Mandaluyong. Sa Pasig, malakas ang ulan. Eh, okay. So, hindi ko lang sa ibang area. But in Pasig, napakalakas ang ulan. At napakasarap matulog. Pero mas masarap mag-worship sa Panginoon. Amen po ba? And every time we're gathered together, I believe God will minister to us. God will speak to us. And once again, welcome to Victory. And of course, those people who are joining us online, thank you. You're not watching. You are worshiping with us. Amen? Okay, meron po bang first-timer dito ngayon? We are so glad that you have checked us out. Nakabisita kayo. And thank you for being here. We hope this will not be your first and last time to be with us, but hopefully, okay, sabi nga, sabi nga po ni Hurley, one of our campus missionaries, we are here to honor God and make disciples, and it is our desire to be able to help you grow in your walk with God. So, hope to see you again next time, and like I said, sana hindi po ito yung una at huli na makasama namin kayo. My name is Anthony Ong, one of the pastors here. Pastor Mark is our lead pastor, okay, and right now I'll be preaching for him. And God has a word for us today, and we started uh, this year believing for miracles, okay? Whatever year we had, whatever, the, whatever's the picture of, of, of our year last year or early this year, or whatever we, are, we went through the past months with all humility and confidence, sabi natin, Lord, we're going to believe for miracles. That's why our series is even in the impossible. And how many of you, that is your faith declaration that this year is a year of breakthroughs. This year, we are going to believe that God will meet our every need, even the impossible ones. And that is our prayer, and that is our faith. And today, we are on our fourth week, okay? So we're going to talk about anxiety or grief and hope, okay? All of us went through grief. All of us went through difficult situation. But it is my prayer, it is our prayer that the Word of God will minister to us today and that the Word of God will inspire us, will establish our faith, that we will continue to trust God and believe God and follow God no matter what we went through in our journey of faith. Amen? Amen. So can I ask everyone to stand? Let's open our Bibles. And turn it to Luke chapter 7. This is our story, our passage that we're going to talk about this morning. Luke chapter 7. We'll be reading from verse 11 all the way to verse 17. All right. Luke 7. Starting in verse 11. Soon afterward, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who, has, who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. When he came up and touched the bier, the bearer stood still and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began, or sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people, and this report about him spread to the whole of Judea in all the surrounding country. This is the word of the Lord for us today. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are hope. That whatever it is, Lord, that we went through or going through, Thank you for the assurance to each one of us that you are a compassionate God. Thank you that today you will open our hearts, open our eyes, 
and open our ears to receive from you. We set aside anything, Lord, that will hinder us from receiving your word for us today with all of our hearts. Holy Spirit, enlighten and illuminate your words so that we can understand. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everybody will say, Amen. And amen. Pwede na po tayong mo po. Lahat po tayo, na-experience po natin yung mawalan ng mahal sa buhay. Tama po ba? And the passage that we've read, we can see the difficulty and the grief that this widow is going through. Because as you can study the Bible, a widow is someone is really an out, not really an outcast, but something, someone na uh, medyo mahirap siyang uh, pagdaanan because during that time, if you're a widow, basically you don't have someone to support you, you don't have someone who can be there for you, okay? And not just that, hindi lang niya po nawala, hindi lang po siya nawala ng asawa, right now, if you can see the story, he also lose his, her son. And like I said, all of us, know the feeling of losing someone or you know the pain of losing someone special to you. And as a church, you know, we know what we are going through as a church community because Pastor Jonathan, a very dear to us, our pastor, lost his wife the past days. And even us, when we understand and learn about that, we don't know how we can move forward we don't know how we can run our job. We can do our job because Miss Risa is not just an attendee. She's very close to us. And how much more if you lose someone that is very close to you or related to you or a family member? I cannot imagine. We know at some point the pain and the grief that a person will go through. If that person lost someone. In this story, we can also observe several contrasts that really highlights Jesus' compassion to his people. If you will read chapter 7, starting on verse 11, there is a crowd following Jesus. His disciples in a large crowd following Jesus, and they are rejoicing because Jesus has performed a miracle, he healed the sick. Okay, he performed different miracles and, if, and therefore, marami pong nakakilala sa kanya, maraming pong sa kanya. And this group is rejoicing because of that idea that this man is a miracle working God. But if you will read this passage, there's another group of people, okay, a crowd who is also following someone, but not because of the spirit of rejoicing, but this group of people is following someone who is mourning. So the contrast is two groups of people. Someone, or a group of people follows from the spirit of rejoicing and another group is following someone mourning and sympathizing. Yes, crowd is heading to a city called Nain. But this widow and her crowd is heading to a cemetery because her son has died. And we can see afterward, soon afterward, he went to a town called Nain and his disciples, a great crowd, went with him and he drew near to the gate of the town and behold, a man who has died was, bearing carried, was being carried out, only son of his mother. And a widow Whenever you read a passage about a widow, it reveals the desperate economic situation of that person. Because a widow, wala pong trabaho yan. Wala pong source of income. And basically, her hope, or at least her chance of being able to have a better life is when her son get older, and have a job. In verse 13, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. I want to share with you three 
irrefutable, convincing truths about Jesus' compassion and the miraculous work He does to bring comfort and hope. If you need comfort today, if you need hope, you badly needed hope today, I hope that this word and this truth will bring encouragement that you will not leave this place the same, but being built up with your faith. Number one, Jesus sees our pain. He feels our grief and shows up in our time of need. We can see in the passage that Jesus came from a place where he performed a miracle, he provided healing, but this time he went to a city. He shows up, and not just that, he saw a woman. He saw the widow. And when he saw this widow, he had compassion on this widow. He sees the condition of the widow. It's a great encouragement for us that whenever we are going through something, God sees our true condition. Hindi po natin kailangan magpanggap sa Panginoon. Hindi natin kailangan mag-project. Sometimes when we are facing difficulty, it's easy for us to entertain the thoughts and ask God the question, Lord, nakikita mo ba yung pinagdadaanan ko? Nararanasan mo ba? Naiintindihan mo ba kung ano yung kahirapan or yung difficulty that I'm going through? He sees our true condition. He feels our pain we are going through and He's there to comfort you. Jesus said to the woman, do not weep. And interestingly, when you lose someone, diba? how many of you nasa wake ka, tapos umiiyak, sabihin mo, wag kang umiyak. Diba? Di mo sabihin yun, di ba? Pero anong ibig sabihin ni Jesus dito when He said, do not weep? It was not a words of invalidation, but it was a word of affirmation and reassurance because He is about to do something about the situation of a woman, of the woman. Alam niyo po, ano? Real talk lang. Intentional or not. Most of us, if not all, most lang, kasi baka may isa dito perfect eh. Hindi ko nalalahatin, okay? Intentional or, or not, most of us at some point, we are guilty of emotional invalidation towards someone who is who was facing or is facing or going through pain. And how come we are guilty of emotional invalidation? Because we gave words. We gave words. Well, meaningful words to that person or advice to that person. Our motive is good, but our heart, but our, our words are not, are not really comforting. Our words were insensitive. Sino sa rito, you would admit, may nagsabi kayong ganon. Alam parang mali yata yun eh. Maganda lang intention ko. Pero depende sa pagkakasabi at depende kung paano mo sinabi at ano yung sinabi mo exactly. Like for example, meron kang kausap, may pinagdadaanan sa buhay, napakahirap. Because your desire is to comfort that person. Minsan, may nasasabi tayong something like this, kaya mo yan, pagsubok lang yan. Mas matindi pa yung pinagdaanan ko dyan. Nasabi niyo ba yun? Ay, hindi, perfect nga pala. Hindi niyo pa nasabi yun. Yung iba lang sa atin kasi, okay. Yung alam mo yung, okay naman. You, you wanna inspire that person, wanna challenge that person, wanna build that person up. But because of the words that we said, kaya mo yan. Okay lang yan. 
Alam mo, mas matindi pa yung pinagdadaanan ng ibang tao kaysa sa pinagdadaanan mo. Wow. Those words are not comforting, right? Kaya mo yan, mas mahirap pa yung pinagdaanan ko pero kinaya ko. Medyo in ano naman eh, no? inspirational naman, pero parang, teka lang, pati yata ako na-encourage. Parang, parang discourage yata ako. When someone lost a child, typically, what are the words that a person, well-meaningful person would say to bring encouragement? Alam mo, isa lang yun nawala. May tatlo ka pa. Ba? Natatawa kayo, di ba? Pero those words sometimes are given, those advice are given to someone. May tatlo ka pa. Hindi matatapos ang mundo. Meron ka pang naiwan. Tama naman, meron pang naiwan, pero hindi mo pwedeng alisin. Nawalan siya ng anak eh. Pwede bang, pwede bang manahimik ka na lang, okay? Okay, umupo ka na lang dyan. Himasin mo na lang siya. Kasi wala talagang words ang maibibigay. Are you following me? O di kaya naman, may nakunan. Okay lang yan. At least, bata ka pa. Naala ko po, nung nakunan po kami, no? Ay, na, kami, no? Yung asawa ko pala, hindi pala ako nanganak. Okay? We've been waiting for many years. Eh, Siyempre, di naman po namin sinasabi kung ano nangyari, di ba? So, nakunan po siya. Sabi nung isang tao, okay lang yan. At least, nalaman nyo, kaya nyo pang mag-anak. Okay, ako. Oh. Salamat po. Salamat po na. Encourage po ako. Lumayas na po kayo sa harap. Hindi, hindi ko sinabi yan. Okay. Okay. Pero in a way, totoo naman talaga, di ba? Kasi, wow, Lord, thank you. For many years, we were able to know. But hindi kasi na yung ma-explain. Yung tagal namin nagpipray. Eh, nawala eh. Okay? Or, bata ka pa. Marami pang panahon, magkakaanak ka pa. Magkakaanak pa kayo. Those are the words. Or when someone is brokenhearted, Nag-break sila nung kanyang jowa. Okay. Okay lang yan. Ang daming lalaki sa mundo. Ang dami. Wala nga. Wala nga kumahanap. <laughs> or okay lang yan. Maraming babae dyan. Hindi pa katapusan ng mundo. Wow. Those are the words that are not comforting. It only makes the pain worse. But you know what? Jesus will never invalidate our situation. He understands what we are going through. He sees and feels our pain just like what he feels, just like what he sees in the situation when he saw the woman. He had compassion. He felt compassion. And when he said, do not weep, it was his words of comfort and assurance giving an anticipation that he's going to do something over the situation. I like what NLT said, his heart overflowed with compassion. His, he, he felt great compassion as Amplified Version said. He knew how difficult and painful this was for the mother. And that's why he wants to do something. Tayo po, no, bilang human beings, maawain naman tayo at some point. Typical na Pilipino, compassionate naman po tayo, tama po ba? Mabait ng mga Pinoy, typically speaking, generally speaking. Look at the person sitting next to you. Iba mo ka bang mabait? Okay? Sabihin mo nga lang, alam mo, you look great today. Baka magpamilty pa nga yan after the service eh. Okay? Alam mo, alam mo, pagka Sunday, you look great, okay? Compared to other days, Iba kapag Sunday. Baka ipatreat ka pa ng lunch niyan, di ba? Compassionate tayo. But here's the reality. Our compassion sometimes changes, depends on our feelings. Or depends on our situation. Kapag ka maganda gising mo sa umaga, pag may nakita kang nagbamalimos, bibigyan mo. Kasi compassionate ka, gra. Oh, dami kong pera. Magkano ba? Magkano? Di ba? Pero pag gising mo sa umaga at nagmamadali ka, late ka na, galit ka na sa mundo. May lumapit sa iyo, hingi ng pera. Papakahirap ako magtrabaho eh. Kayo hingi lang kayo ng hingi. Diba? It changes. 
our kindness and compassion changes based on our situation. But Jesus' compassion is constant. Amen? Persevering, unwavering, matchless, and comparable to none. And here, we can only marvel at the providence of God because He came from this place, performed a miracle, and right now headed to this another place. And some of us will think, what a coincidence. Kaka, gawa lang niya ng miracle, tas mayroong namatay. Jesus could have been somewhere else. Jesus could have basically do other things. And yet, out of all places and time, on his way to the town of Nain, ito naman, may funeral possession. Inisip ba natin, nagkataon lang yon? Inisip mo ba, parang, wow, galing naman ng timing, no. It was providentially set by God. It was providentially set by Jesus knowing that I will meet someone and there is someone out there who needed my love, my grace, and mercy. And even before I met her, even before I meet her, I already know her true condition. He went because he wanted to make his presence felt. By the way, he went even though he was not asked to go. Why? Because he sees, he feels, and wanted to meet the person. Wanted to meet the need for comfort from this woman. He shows up every time we need him. I like what I like about Jesus is he always shows up every time we need him. He knows what we're going through. And his presence is always available for us. And Jesus desires to be with you. If you're going through something in life, if you need comfort, if you're going through grief, I want to let you know Jesus, des- Jesus desires to be with you and will never desert you when you need him the most. The same way that he is there when you're enjoying, the same way that you experience his presence when everything is doing well, he is still there. The same way he's still there when you need him the most. He sees your pain, <clears throat> feels your grief, and shows up in your time of need. Kaya pagka may pinagdadaan tayo, mga kapatid, huwag niyong isipin na, Lord, pinabayaan mo ako. Lord, nag-iisa ako. Lord, wala ka. No, His presence is there for us. I like Psalm 4, 145, verse 18 to 20 says, The word, the Lord is near to all who call on Him. To all who call on Him in truth, He, ful- he fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love Him. When we call upon Him, he will respond. When, he, when we read his word, he will speak to us. And when we are going through something, difficult situation, we're in a difficult situation, he will send people. He will send church community to be there for you. Amen? Jesus sees our pain, feels our grief, and shows up in our time of need. Verse 14, then he came up and touched the beer, and the bearer stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Another thing that I want to share with you, convincing truth about Jesus' compassion, is that Jesus' compassion is reflected through his actions. In the miraculous work, he graciously performs. Hindi lang po nakikita, hindi lang niya po nararamdaman, hindi lang niya po tayo sinasamahan. He will do something with the situation. He will do something about our situation. And in fact, because God is a compassionate God, it reflects true 
the miracles, the answered prayers, the favor, the goodness, the blessings, the protection that we always experience every single day. Do we deserve all the blessings from the Lord? Is Jesus obligated to respond to all our prayers? May utang ba si Lord sa atin? Wala naman po, di ba? Tayo po ang may kasalanan. Tayo po ang may atraso sa Panginoon. But because He is a compassionate God, He always do something. He always extend His love and His mercy. Jesus' compassion compelled Him to perform miraculous work for the widow. He knew how difficult this will be for the widow. Paano to mabubuhay? Paano to makakasurvive? And this compassion that Jesus had moved him into action. Not just to bring comfort. Imagine, not just to bring comfort. Hindi lang do not weep. But you know what? His compassion was reflected through his action. He did not bring comfort. He did not just bring comfort. He bring to life the widow's son. Para pong tayo, no, pagka talagang naawa tayo, pag namumove tayo sa sitwasyon, ano pong ginagawa natin? Ano pong response natin when we are so moved with a situation? Have you ever, can you ever, can you think of something, a situation when you were moved? And because you were moved, what did you do? It cost you something. Either nagbigay ka, either nagsakripisyo ka, you were out of your comfort zone because you were moved. Pag binaral po natin yung word na compassion, yung itsura niya po is pa- parang galing sa kaibuturan ng puso mo o dito sa sikmura mo na hindi ka mapakali na parang may gusto kang gawin. Naranasan niyo po ba yun? When you are in a situation and you can't help but do something, hindi pwede. I need to do something. Jesus was so compelled that he did something for the widow. Jesus' power to heal was demonstrated by a great miracle. And it was the raising of the sons of the widow. Raising the dead to life. He touched the beer. According to the Old Testament, you cannot touch dead man or dead person. Pag inawakan po nila yon. They are unclean, unclean, and they have to separate themselves for one week. But here, Jesus goes beyond whatever the culture or the Old Testament is saying. Not that He's trying to demolish the law, but he's trying to give us a picture that He is willing to get out of the comfort zone and go out of His way just to show us His heart. Jesus is unconcerned about the ceremonial uncleanliness. For he is not made unclean when he touches the dead. Instead, the dead man comes to life. And that is what happens whenever Jesus touches our life. Something is going to happen. Something dirty, something unclean will be cleansed. Something impure that will be pure. Something dead will come to life. Hallelujah. That is how powerful our God is. Amen? Jesus has the power to redeem and to resurrect. And Jesus, because of His compassion, restored the joy, not just of the widow, but of His people in the community upon receiving the miracle that he performed. What area in your life today that seemingly dead, what area in your life today that probably you have already put a period or declared dead, Lord, wala na siguro talaga. Is, is, is really that the word of God for you? 
or it is just you. And I believe because God is a compassionate God and a miracle-working God, He can change our situation out of His providence and His love and His compassion. He can do and perform miracles for you. That is our prayer. That is our heart for the year. Alam natin, probably masabi natin, Lord, but ang tagal. God, hindi mo in-answer to, Lord. Mangyayari ba talaga? But we keep on believing and trusting. Amen? I have a question for you. The question for you, is Jesus all-powerful? Is Jesus all-powerful? Yes. Parang hindi yata kayo convinced. Is Jesus all-powerful? Yes. I believe, yes. Is Jesus capable of doing everything for you? Yes. Is Jesus willing to do miracles for you? Yes. Okay, ba? <laughs> Hindi ko po ako convinced, pero sige. Lilipsing na lang po ako. Baka po makita ni Lord eh. Yes, He is willing to do miracles for you and for me. I believe that with all of my heart. Sino naniwala doon that God is willing to do miracles for you? Yes. yes, amen. Is He going to answer all our prayers? Yes. No. Sorry. He will not give all our prayers. As much as I want to say yes, but I am not God. And I believe God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are better. God's plans are better. His desire is to provide miracle for us. Yes. Is He going to give us everything that we will ask Him? No. Because He is God. And we are not. However, do our answered, though, do our, our unanswered prayers determine how compassionate Jesus is? No. Not because there is an, ans- an answered prayer. He will say, you will conclude, Lord, hindi ka compassionate. Hindi ka naawa. No. That's not will determine his heart for you and for me. But the last question that I want to make, I want to ask you, are we still going to trust and put our trust in Jesus? Believe in miracles and worship him in spite of some unanswered prayers? Yes. You know why? Because whatever you are going through in your life, God remains to be faithful and compassionate. I like what Herlim said a while ago. He says, steadfast love never ceases. His grace and His mercy Always new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Jesus' compassion is reflected through his actions in the miraculous work he graciously performs. In verse 16, fear sees them all. When he performed that miracle, Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him spread through the whole of Judea and all of the surrounding country. Every miracle brings hope. But ultimately leads to the purpose of experiencing Jesus, giving reverence and worship 
he deserves. Praise God for the answered prayer. Praise God for this miracle. But what was the result? What was the response of the people? Great fear seized them all. They worshiped God. They glorified God. The response of the people was to glorify God and identify Jesus with the prophets, with the prophet the Jew has been waiting for. They were amazed. They were, they, they were in awe. And it did not take long that Jesus became known and the report of this miracle spread throughout the region and other countries. People were even more enthusiastic to see Jesus in the great crowds followed him. In our church, we will never stop believing for miracles. Yes, there are an answered prayer, but it will never stop us from believing and praying. Amen? And every time we receive a miracle, we will worship God more. We will serve Him more. We will follow Him more. We will glorify Him more. And we will praise Him more. How is your life after you experience the miracle of Jesus? Do you love God more now? Do you serve Him more? Are you enthusiastic and passionate even more to love and serve and worship Him? When you receive what you prayed for, does that blessing compete your relationship with Jesus? Or that blessing reminds you that even more, Lord, I will worship you. That I am living in this blessing that in reality before is just a prayer, is just a dream. But now it's a reality. When people saw the power of God. They worship the Lord more. They glorify God more. Why do we want miracle? Why are we declaring with all humility and confidence that this year is a year of miracle? Because we want to know God more. Because we want God more. Not just the blessing, but His presence, His grace, and His love. That we want to tell the world how powerful, how gracious, how faithful He is to us. Did you grow in worship and reverence to Him after that miracle? Is your life continuously giving glory and praises due His name? Are the people around you notice and observe that you are a different person now compared before because you're loving God more than ever. That is our prayer. That you will not stop in the miracle. But the miracle will just a means to an end. That you will love God more, worship God more, glorify God more, and even use our lives and our testimonies and our miracle so that other people will also come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Amen? Jesus sees our pain, feels our grief, and shows up in our time of need. Jesus' compassion is reflected through His actions in the miraculous work He graciously performs. And lastly, every miracle brings hope. Yes, it brings hope, but ultimately leads to our purpose of experiencing Jesus, giving reverence and worship He deserves. Can I ask everyone to stand? Let's respond to worship. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you're facing currently today. But may you come to Jesus. May we all come to Jesus. Not with anger, not with disappointment, 
but with trust. In saying, Lord, I may not understand my situation, but I know you do. You see, you feel it, and thank you that you will respond to me today. I want to invite you to come to Jesus and worship him and give the glory, the praises that he deserves from his people. Let's worship the Lord. Jesus. Lord, thank you because we are safe in your presence. Thank you, Lord, that there is an assurance, Lord, that whenever we come to you, Lord, you will experience your presence. In fact, Lord, studying the story, God, of a widow, Lord, it is you, Lord, who initiated, it is you who reached out, Lord. And that picture, Lord, gave us assurance, Lord, that whenever we desire to come to you, you want to let us know that even before we come to you, you're already coming to us. You are the one reaching out to us. Thank you for that assurance of hope and comfort that you are with us and will never abandon us, desert us, Lord, in our time of need. As every eye close and every head bow, I want to pray for some of you are here today. I don't know what you're going through in life. But if you're here today saying, Lord, I am anxious, Lord. I am grieving for whatever reason. 
Maybe you lost someone or you lost something. But you're saying, Lord, I know in my spirit, Lord, I am grieving. God wants to bring comfort to you. God wants to encourage you. Build up your faith. Maybe you're saying, Lord, I don't know what's happening. I cannot understand my situation, Lord. Let me tell you, it's good to be open to God. It's good to give God our frustrations, our disappointments. It's good to be vulnerable before Jesus. And if you're here today saying, Lord, I am that person, Lord. I am grieving and I need your comfort. I cannot understand, Lord, everything, Lord. Minsan iniisip ko, Lord, ba't ganon? Pwede mo namang gawa ng paraan. But Lord, it seems like, Lord, I'm being impatient, Lord, according to your way. I'm impatient with your ways. I'm being impatient with your timing. But Lord, today, I need your word of co- words of comfort and assurance knowing that you are with me. If that is you, will you please raise your hands so that I can pray for you. Lord, thank you for these people, Lord. You see these hands, Lord. Today, I speak your, wor- your comfort, Lord, to these people. Thank you, Jesus. Because just like what you did to the widow, Lord, you did something to her. And as these hands are being raised, Lord, thank you that you cease their pain, Lord. That you feel the grief, Lord, that they're going through. And thank you that you are there for them. May your words, may your word, Lord, the Bible, Lord God, whenever they open it, Lord, may you speak to them. Whenever we call, they call upon you, Father, may you respond to them. Thank you, Jesus, because they're not alone. Thank you, Lord, that as we face these challenges in life, Lord, you are with us and you will never abandon us. And today, Lord, may your spirit build them up. May your spirit, Lord, may your spirit comfort them. Give them peace. Give them hope. Give them faith, Lord, believing that even if, Lord, there are setbacks, there are unanswered prayers, it will never change your character and your attribute that you are a compassionate God. And therefore, Lord, you will, we will trust you. We will hold on to you. Lord, thank you for comforting your people today. In Jesus' name. Another thing that I want to pray is maybe for some of us who are believing for miracle. Like I said kanina, our unanswered prayers will never stop us from continuously believing for miracle. And how many of you, you are believing for a miracle to happen for you, maybe this month, maybe this week, maybe this year? How many of you are believing for a miracle? I believe all of us. And I want us to combine our faith together. Can we all raise up our hands and say, Lord, here we are. Thank you, God, because you are a miracle-working God. And today, Lord, we submit to you, Lord, everything. Lord, we put our faith together, Lord. We combine our faith together, trusting and believing, Lord, that you will never withhold anything that is good and beneficial for your people, Lord. You take delight in the prosperity of your people. And therefore, Lord, you are graciously, you will graciously perform miracle of healing, miracle of provision, miracle of favor, Lord God, protection, restoration of relationship, whatever that is, Lord. Thank you that you will open doors for us that nobody can shut, Lord. That when a door is closed for us, Lord, you can open a gate. You can even open a window, Lord God, because nothing can stop the blessings that you are going to give to your children. And today, Lord, as your people, we're coming to you, O Lord, not as your servants, but as your children, Lord, because we know that our Father in heaven is a gracious God. And Lord, I pray that you strengthen the faith of your people, establish the faith of your people. Lord, secure our peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, secure our joy, Lord, that, it, that nothing can take it away from us. And Lord, we're leaving this place, Lord, assured, comforted, that our God is with us and never against us. That our God is faithful, our God is good, and our God is compassionate. Lord, receive these miracles. And as we receive these miracles by faith, may we all give you glory. May we all give you praises, Lord. May we all, even more, follow, serve. 
and surrender our life to you more and more, Lord, that you will not stop on the blessing and the miracle, but rather we will follow you all the days of our life. We bless you, God. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Praise God. The last thing I want to pray before we leave this place, as I, I want all our eyes closed and bow our heads. And if you're here today, you have not or never received Jesus in your life. We've experienced and witnessed how compassionate our God is. Not just providing comfort, but even performing a miracle. But you know what? Let me tell you the greatest miracle that Jesus has performed is forgiveness and grace. That we're all sinners. We are all destined to face punishment in hell. But He died on the cross so that we can experience life. If you're here today, every eye closed and every head bow. I want to ask you if there's anyone here you're saying, Lord, I have never given my life to you. I have never made a decision to follow you and surrender my life to you and make you the Lord and Savior of my life. But today, I want to make that decision. If that is you, I want you to follow this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving me the opportunity to receive you today as my Lord, my Master, my Savior. I'm sorry for all the sins that I have committed. And today, I put my trust in what you have done on the cross for the forgiveness of my sin. I believe by faith that you died on the cross for me. And after three days, you rose from the dead to give me eternal life. Jesus, I want to receive you today. Be my Lord. Be my master. Be my savior. Help me to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise God. If you pray that prayer, maybe you pray that prayer for the very first time, we want to make sure that all of us will have an opportunity to receive Jesus every single Sunday. If you pray that prayer for the very first time today, would you raise your hand so that we can rejoice with you? Meron ba? You pray that prayer. Anyone here? You pray that prayer, you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. Praise God. I know there is one at least. Yes, I see that hand. Praise God. Palapakan natin. Thank you, Lord. Can you please raise your hand so I can see you? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You know what, sir? That decision is the best decision you have ever made in your life. You know what the Bible says? If one person received Jesus as his Lord and Master, heaven and rejoicing is rejoicing. That is why we are rejoicing today. Praise God. Any more who prayed that prayer? Pray the prayer. Yes. Thank you, sir. Can you please raise your hand if you prayed that prayer? Sir, if you are surrounded with these people, please pray for them. Reach out to them. Do not leave this place without praying for you. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. God is good. Amen. Thank you, Lord.